shortcuts. There'll be none of those in today's video because we're talking about the abdominal anatomy. This is not how to get a ripped six pack in three easy steps. This is how your abs work. You're gonna learn something today. If you're just interested in six packs, I should tell you this right now, guys. This is the wrong video. You dumb fucked up. You wanna know a secret? You wanna know a six pack shortcut secret? Tape worm in your stomach. Let it do its work. Seriously, find out what happens. And in this video, we're gonna talk about four different muscles. The basic, I'm gonna simplify this, right? How your abs actually work and how to properly train them. First, we have to talk about the rectus abdominis, the outer portion of the abs that everybody cares about, the six pack, that is your six pack right there, the outer layer, your rectus abdominis. What's its function? Oh, its main function is flexion of the trunk. Think any crunch, any sit up, that is your rectus abdominis. Resisting flexion of the trunk is also another function of your abs. So when you hold that tight position, when you're doing a front squat, are you doing any flexion of the trunk? No, but are your abs trained? Yes, because you have to contract your abs to keep them tight, to brace your core, keep your spine in that neutral position. Exercise is what exercise? Well, most people actually overtrain their rectus abdominis or really their neck when they do sit ups because they do it wrong. But a couple solid choices right here. We got the reverse crunch, cable crunch. I already have an ab routine that includes some of those and the plank. With that being said, the lower portion along with your hip muscle, your hip flexor, is also responsible for flexion of the hip. Expert tip! If you want to emphasize a little bit more your lower abdominals, doing hanging leg raises or something that involves hip flexion will be more beneficial. And that moves us on to the next portion, the transverse abdominus. A lot of people will be talking about this. Yeah, you know, about doing vacuum poses, about, you know, your natural weightlifting belt, about learning to brace your core. And it is important. It's found underneath your rectus abdominis. It's buried deep. It's a long lost treasure. But its primary function, as I just said, is to brace the core. So when you take a big belly breath, when you learn the Valsalva maneuver, and you expand your stomach and you keep it then tight, you're bracing as if someone's gonna punch you in the stomach, that's your transverse abdominus. Once again, for this muscle, because it helps to contribute to bracing your core, a lot of the exercises then would be variations of the plank or compound lifts. As I said before, front squats, uh, heavy deadlifts, uh, overhead press, what it's good at. And if you do do ab exercises, then something like the ab wheel where your core is constantly being stimulated as you're rolling the wheel out would better serve your transverse abdominus. If done correctly, it can really protect your lower back and prevent some nasty ass injuries. Next up, we gotta talk about the obliques. There are actually two, the internal and external. Now, the external oblique is found closer to the front of your body and the internal, as it implies, is found further back. They always work together with one another. Uh, any rotation of the trunk like so is responsible for, as well as lateral flexion, so think side bends. For athletes who need to be very mobile and able to rotate on the drop of a dime, doing some direct oblique work where it involves rotation of the trunk would be wise. Medicine ball Russian twist, that pallet press, the wood chopper. Lastly, we're talking about the quadratus lumborum. Wow, big word. Sounds fancy. Uh, there are more muscles, but I'm keeping this condensed, short, tight. Uh, it's also responsible for the lateral flexion of the trunk. So when you do a side bend, a Saxon side bend, a windmill, it's involving both the obliques and the lumborum. Okay, now we know the primary functions of the different muscles in your core. How should you train them? Well, it depends upon the individual. Like any other muscle, you gotta look at balance or imbalance. If someone's imbalanced, they have a weak core, they should work on it more often. I am of the opinion that proper core movements, such as the ab wheel, uh, a plank hold, the pallet press, should be incorporated at least one time a week, like other muscles. At the same time, you should learn to integrate your core by learning how to brace that shit, that Valsalva maneuver. So when you do front squats, the overhead press, you have that strong, stable base. A two-pronged approach. Learn to integrate and then isolate the weaker areas. So if you're looking for a shortcut to get abs, I'm sorry to disappoint you. If you're looking to get educated, then you probably are walking away with something special today. So thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you, a fool? Make sure you're subscribed. Chef Buff Army, my zealous army, Z-E-A-L-O-U-S. I will be seeing all you guys in the next video. Peace.